Hey everybody and welcome back to another one of my CFI lesson practice videos. This lesson today is going to be on airplane flight controls. Just put this in present mode. Airplane flight controls. Why do you need to know about an airplane flight control? Well, you're going to be flying a plane, right? You're going to be you're going to be in control of the plane, so you need to know how these various flight controls operate so you can make the correct inputs to control the airplane in the way that you want it to go. So we're going to talk about the primary flight controls, secondary flight controls, and trim systems. We have a diagram here of a plane, different axes of movement. Um, so each of the flight controls is going to move the plane around a certain axis of rotation. So we have the vertical axis. We can see here the blue straight up and down controls the yaw, um, swinging the nose to the left and to the right. That's called yaw. We control that with the rudders, with our feet on the rudder pedals. Um, we have the lateral axis. This green one here controls the pitch. So, I've got this little model airplane here, nose up, nose down. That's the pitch, and that's controlled with the elevator. And then we've got the longitudinal axis, this kind of white one here, um, controls the roll or bank, bank left and right. That's controlled with the ailerons, so we move that control stick to the left or to the right for bank. We can see another picture here. We can see that the ailerons here are here in blue on the outboard trailing edge of the wing. The very end edge of the wing. Rudder here in red which is on the vertical stabilizer on the very end of the tail there. And the elevator here in green on the horizontal stabilizer. So, those are the three primary flight controls. First, the ailerons. We'll get into a little bit more details here. Ailerons here in red. You can see that one goes up and one goes down. That's always the case with the ailerons. They're, um, as we said before, attached to the outboard trailing edge of the wing we move that control stick or the yoke to the left and to the right to control these ailerons. So if we put the control stick to the left like that, the left one goes up and the right one goes down. This changes what's called the camber um, or the curve of the wing. So you can see that the right one over here will angle down, have a little bit more of a curve to it. The le left one will go up, have a lot less of a curve. So the way that those ailerons move up and down will cause, um, cause lift to increase or decrease on each wing and that's what causes the plane to roll or bank to the left and to the right. All right, next we have the elevator. We can see a picture here, Cessna. Here's the elevator on the back of the horizontal stabilizer. Controls pitch about the lateral axis. Pitch up and down. If we want the nose to pitch up, we pull back on the yoke. If we want the nose to go down, we push forward. So what that does is, um, as this is like if we were to push forward on the control stick, that uh, elevator goes down like that, and that will cause the nose, the tail to lift up, and the nose to go down. Does that make sense? So what might you see when you pull back? The opposite, right? That elevator is going to go up, causing the tail to go down. You can imagine the airflow hitting that elevator 
and that will want, if you look at that, you can see that the nose, or the tail, is going to want to rise up. Um, this pitching movement occurs about the center of gravity of the plane. So wherever the CG is, that pitch is going to um, work around that CG. Alright, the next primary flight control is the rudder. We control that with our feet, with the pedals. The rudder, as we saw before, is on the very end here of the vertical stabilizer on the tail of the plane. It controls movement of the aircraft about the vertical axis. So, as we saw in that diagram before, picture a line straight up like this plane yaws to the left and to the right. Um, so when we step on that left pedal, we want the nose to go left, we step on the left pedal. If we want the nose to go right, we step on the right pedal. Um, that rudder is going to swing back and forth and the airflow is going to move, hit that in a certain way to swing the nose where we want it to go. Left pedal makes the rudder go to the left, right pedal, right rudder makes the rudder swing to the right. Um, that effectiveness increases with airspeed as well, so the faster we go, we, we can imagine the more airflow is moving past that rudder, so the more effectiveness it's going to have at those higher airspeeds. Alright, before we move on to secondary flight controls, let's make sure you were paying attention. What are the three primary flight controls? You got them? We have the ailerons, the elevator, and the rudder. Nice job. Alright, let's move on to secondary flight controls. We've got flaps leading edge devices, spoilers, and trim systems. Flaps, um, we're all probably pretty common, or at least we've heard of flaps, because they are the most common high lift device. Um, they're attached to the trailing edge of the wing. You can see here that flap is in the down position. and what the flaps do is they increase lift and increase drag. So once again, we're changing the camber or the curve of the wing and there's more um, of a distance for the air to travel. It travels in a certain way that increases lift. When we extend the flaps, we increase lift. It increases drag. You can imagine how it would increase drag, right? sticking that down, all that um, airflow is hitting against that, creating more drag. So that allows us to descend at a faster rate without increasing the airspeed, which is important when we're coming into land. And we want more lift at those higher angles of attack when we're flying slower at high angles of attack. So that's what the flaps are for. There's a few different types of flaps. This is taken from the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. We have a plane flap, split flap, slotted flap, fowler flap, slotted fowler flap. So based on the aircraft design, they're going to have one of these types of flaps to produce a certain amount of lift, a certain amount of drag, based off the manufacturer's design of the aircraft. The most common ones I've seen are the plane flap and the slotted flap. Um, you'll probably see the other types of flaps on like airliners and jets, but you can see here and review these in the P-Hack to see how they operate. The next secondary flight control is leading edge devices. 
Um, there's a few different types, slots and slats. These are on the um, leading edge of the wing. They move in and out to direct airflow from the bottom of the wing to the top. We want more lift, so that directs the airflow when we're at those higher angles of attack, maybe lower air speeds. We want as much lift as possible, so that's what the leading edge devices are for. Fixed slots, movable slots, leading edge flaps, leading edge cuffs. Now, they all um, have the, the same purpose, they're just operated a little bit differently. Some are controlled by the pilot with the switch in the cockpit, and some automatically deploy, go in and out, based off of um, if there's a low pressure um, low enough pressure it'll extend out and high enough pressure it'll go back so um, like we said we want as much lift as possible especially on those large jets when we're high, flying at higher angles of attack slower air speeds um, so yeah that's leading edge devices the next secondary flight control is spoilers now we've all probably seen this as well these are spoilers right here. Um, so just picture in your head for a second. We've all flown on an airliner. We've been coming in. When do you see those? You're coming in to land, right? You start seeing them being deployed. And when you land, they go up. I don't know if you've noticed that. But that, what does that do? Well, the word spoil... That's how I remember this. Spoilers spoil the smooth airflow over the wing, right? Normally, the airflow is not hitting those, but when those are extended, you're spoiling that and you're decreasing lift. Um, why do we want to do that? Because, well, we want to stop the plane, right? So when we land, those go all the way up. We want to transfer the weight off the wings onto the wheels so we can use the brakes and get that plane stopped. <laughs> Alright, now let's talk about trim systems. This is very common as well. We have a picture here, the Sport Cruiser, which is the plane that I fly. We have trim buttons on top of the control stick. It's really nice. You, can, you, can, uh, you don't have to reach down like you would in a 172 reach down there and move the trim up and down so um, let me ask you this what what is the purpose of using trim think about it for a second well let's say we're flying along right we're flying and we've taken off and we're, we notice our arm is getting really tired because we're trying to keep that nose level with the horizon. So we're using a lot of forward pressure. Our arm's starting to get really tired. And uh, what do we do? Well, we can use a little bit of forward trim, right? We can move that wheel. We can push the button on there. We want to relieve those control pressures because it makes our job easier. Right? That's what they're there for, to relieve the constant, um, the need to maintain constant pressure on the controls. So there's a few different types of trims. The trim tab, which is very common, we just saw the picture of that 172 trim wheel. What that does is when you move that wheel up or down, that tab will move up or down and stay wherever it's set to. So if you pull back on the control stick, um, that elevator will move up and the trim tab will just stay wherever it's set to. It, mo it moves in the opposite direction of the elevator. Alright, so now let's talk about the balance tabs. They might look like the trim tab, but they have one major difference balance tabs are attached to the control surface linkage 
So when the control surface is moved in one direction, the balance tab moves in the opposite direction. You can see here when the elevator moves up, that balance tab moves down. There's a linkage that connects the balance tab. A couple links here, we're not going to look at these right now, but there's a lot of other good YouTube videos of pilots talking about these trim systems. Um, there's an, uh, an article I like on boldmethod.com that talks about trim systems. Um, a servo tab, it's a lot similar to the um, trim tab, but it's connected to the flight control so when you move the control stick the servo tab moves in the um, opposite direction so when you move that back the elevator moves up and that servo tab will move down so it's linked to the control stick Anti-servo tab moves in the same direction as we can see here in this picture. That's what we have in the Sport Cruiser. You might say to yourself, well, why do you want it to move in the same direction? Think about that one. All the other ones move in the opposite direction. Why do you want it to move in the same direction? Well, it decreases the sensitivity of the flight controls. It almost makes them feel a little bit heavier and they also can relieve that pilot of the control pressures. You can see here that if that goes up, the wind moving past that is going to want to push it down at a little bit of um, decreased sensitivity in the controls. Ground adjustable tab, that's pretty common as well. I've seen these on 172s just on the very end of like the rudder right there. Those are bent into a certain position while you're on the ground. It's a trial and error thing. So you got to bend it a little bit and then go fly and see if um, you're maintaining your desired flight coordination. And if you're not, you can land and adjust that once again. So that is a ground adjustable tab. And those are the primary and secondary flight controls. So let's do a little bit of a quiz. What are the three primary flight controls once again? We have the ailerons, the elevator, and the rudder. Secondary flight controls, think about those. Flaps, leading edge devices, spoilers, and we talked about trim systems. So, now you know how the flight controls work. It's very important to know how they work so you can control the plane in the way that you want it to go. It'd be very, very hard to get in a plane and not know how these systems operate. You're not going to know how to fly the plane. So that's why we need to know these things. We start from the basics and yeah, that's the primary and secondary flight controls. Thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed.